problems? We do. We've got to chat about them. And something that really excites me is something that excites our guest of honor today, and that is South Africa. South Africa excites her and her passion for affecting social change. And we need more of these kind of people in South Africa. Her love for the written word has stolen South African hearts everywhere. From her debut novel, Coconut, she cemented her position as an award-winning, best-selling South African author. And her follow-up novel, Spilt Milk, did that as well. Now, politics is never easy to talk about, right? You don't want to be the person that brings up politics. Now, can you imagine having to write about it? But uh, it's what sustains South Africa's sweetheart, and she's really cracked the code of intimately addressing complexities and sensitive political issues through a series of characters to whom we can all relate. And I think that really there is such magic in that, because it's something that we can read and say, hang on, I understand that, I'm living that. This is me, this is my life, I can relate. And believe me, ladies, it's no easy feat. Anyone here ever tried writing a book? <laughs> Try writing an Instagram post. <laughs> that we all find ourselves at this beautiful breakfast to celebrate the continued success of Capano, who is also about to have a baby. Is there anything you can't do? We need lessons. We definitely need lessons. So her latest offering is a poignant and compelling tale of how the broken continue to survive. And I think that's something we can all relate to. There's something in each and every one of us that can be broken at some point. And it's just how we continue to survive because that's the only option we have, right? Period Pain is the book and the title I think is very apt. It captures the heartache and confusions of South Africans in surviving this period of headline horrors. And I mean, you've seen them all, right? Xenophobia, crime, corruption, corrective rape and the abomination of a public health care system. And the challenges of technology. <laughs> By capturing the essence of the period that we and our country currently found ourselves in, Kapano affords us the opportunity through her therapeutic storytelling to reflect, question, ponder, and a chance to rediscover our humanity. What a beautiful gift. Let's give her a round of applause. I mean, she's doing wonderful things. And she really is the emerging voice of a new generation of South African writers, and that's something that really excites me. She tackles the issues that we grapple with head on. She's not afraid to take those on. She's got the weight of our history behind her, but we are in a new generation. I mean, from things like our hair to what we as women look like, there's a lot of pressure on us, right? To racial issues, class, colonization. These are all things that Kapano tackles head on. And she is the voice for so many of us in this generation. She presents this honest social commentary whilst giving permission, giving us permission to be ourselves. Another very generous gift. There's a lot of writers right, trying to sway us, trying to get us to think like them. She allows us to be who we are, where we are, in the country that we are, whilst uh, creating these characters that we can relate to. And I think that is a magical, magical gift. So I'm not the only one that thinks she's gifted or thinks she's incredible. She's got so many awards behind her name. Just to name a few, she's a European Union Literary Award winner, a Wale Shalinke Prize for Literature winner, a Glamour Woman of the Year winner, and she's been identified, and this for me is absolutely incredible, as one of the 21 South African icons. And she said, to be South African is to inherit a painful but courageous history. She says that South Africans are always looking at how we can do things better, and she loves being a part of that. And so do we, right? Yes. yes. So, so inspiring. She's a young, conscious woman, and proof that you should never let anyone tell you that you're too young to accomplish something. After all, a baby shark is still a shark, right? Yes. <laughs> 
So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the incredible opportunity to have Kapano read to us from her latest offering, Perry and Pay. She's a doctor, she's an author, she's a mother, and soon to be a mother of two, and a fellow proud South African. So ladies, without further ado, Kapano Matwa. When I first started to bleed, I thought mom would kill me. I was a naughty child, putting my fingers where I should, feeling parts of my body had a nervous discussion. So when at the Rand Easter show, I saw a thick brown slash on my tip about panties. I didn't cry like most of the No, I knew immediately that it was my punishment from God. I hid it for days. I collected cuts of toilet paper and wrapped them round and round with much of my really school rings. They were scratchy and uncomfortable, but nothing compared to the discomfort I knew would come with confessing to God that I had sinned and was bleeding as a result. That would surely be the end of it. So when I stood on the tips of my tallest toes and pulled the garage door closed on our way to church one Sunday morning, Revealing beneath my Scottish Highland style dress a dark secret that had until then remained hidden between my thighs. And Ma asked as I got back into the car what those spots were on my glitter points. I knew for sure that this was the beginning of my end. And in some ways it was, because as if an eager response to Ma's question, a flat gate opened up the window. And blood poured out between my thighs, down my legs, and onto my baby baby shoes, and continued to do so for weeks. Easing up for a few days at a time, only to gush out again with even more intensity, charging past my thoughts in its way. I need to let the family know that Judge Rossero, periodically pouring for one's vagina, was no divine punishment at all, but it was logically necessary and partly part of the upper side that should not be allowed and celebrated. Nonetheless, I prayed relentlessly that the God who had parted the Red Sea and glided right up for the people who died might consider blessing me with the season of climax. I remember telling her that I wanted to take an hour to cut away from me and incinerate it in the large chamber at the hospital behind the hill. She said I was mad. It is mad, ma, as I had screamed. It is not mad, Mr. Chelsea. It's just unwell. Well, I'm unwell because of it, ma. Ma said I was speaking nonsense. That these were the things that women were to enjoy. And that if it was removed from me, I would one day regret being able to bring life into the world. Life? What did I care for bringing life into the world when I couldn't have a life of my own? When I lived a hostage to a beast in my pelvis that could split its head at any moment of its choosing and angrily spill its contents onto the floor at any second of its liking without provocation, what life did I have that I might not care about that? No, she I became alone. Not because I wanted to be alone, but because it was needed for your own the stains didn't seem to bother him as much as they bother the families. Like when Papa bought him a car and he offered to take his first spin. I was so excited to see Tiamo was I forgot to run into the house to change my tail one and have a second day of time. It was only when we got into the highway, us foolish and not many came to get to the highway, that I saw the traffic of what. I tried not to think about it. Even when I felt the stickiness between my thighs, I knew that the temple was in the motion of the time saturated, and the only way out was through my jeans and onto Tiamo's new bus. I tried not to focus on the chase each other and Tiamo was singing along to me. When we eventually got home, I came to take not to me. But I'm really glad, because I saw through my bedroom window later the bucket of soapy water and the sponge in the At school, I always had a crack of my thoughts. Making sure there was never anything behind me, so that if I missed on my 
soldiers. Please not give me the last two. I was clever and inquisitive at school, and I had no interest in hanging out with the child makers who marked out the last row of guests as they were. But I knew that I was to maintain a seat for myself, far from the suspicious eyes of the crudest girls, acting as badass as the best of them. You learn some tricks as you go. Dark clothing, ski pants on and sweat tunic, the cheap, thick, no name, no name brand pad, and the always ability to absorb the empty Never without a tap on your car. So that if you have to dash to the bathroom for car, you don't have to bend over and scratch on your school. That lady, forget it. Synchronized swimming, are you crazy? Gymnastics, not even if I was paid. Netball, risky, running sometimes. No parties, no sleepovers. I wanted none of the humiliation that would come with a phone call from another parent to advise that her daughter had played all the way through the sheets and into the mattress. She pretended it didn't bother me, but I knew she was just as embarrassed and perplexed by the aggression of her daughter's young girl as everybody else was. She would say things like, It's because you eat too much cheese, that's why you bleed the way you do. Or, Those tampons you use, they're unnatural, they keep the dirt from falling out. It made me angry when she said things like that. The machine you just as well as I did, which is all life's tales were nonsense. No amount of cheese can explain why this country is trying to be and the company of business, painting spells, and galloping hard that and didn't have much to get She knew that if it was as simple as getting the so called dirt card free, I'd be walking around with a pad, no paper, not even a tank, and a pipe, just play for all the world to see if that was what it would take to stop the madness from. I was always by the end, always late, and my heart always racing in my chest and high speed. In and out of hospital, I got transfusion after transfusion, pill after pill, patch after patch, injection after injection. Eventually, the bleeding of East India, in fact, it really almost stopped altogether. Ah, the liquid of spotting on the occasion. I can't remember how, on the specific day, it may have been the end of mutual ablation that finally did. I was too young to understand, but I remember my telling Auntie Petunia that the doctors had said that short of a hysterectomy, the only thing that might work was to burn the lining of the wall. Let them burn it, ma! I remember crying. She had shouted at me to be quiet. But I think after I fainted into the cutting that was cool and he now was rushing away, and I stopped caring about the life I'd never be able to bring into the world, and started more worrying more about the life she had put but I didn't trust, and continued to carry around pads, tampons, even big wipes and black pants, wherever I went. When the crunch purses were involved, I watched the MPC as pretty girls walked around the wall with a couple of girls in the lip gloss and the glittering pouches in their hands. But I knew better than to let my guard down. The beast was only sleeping and could wait for any moment. So, on job shadow day, when I saw through the narrow space between the oversized theater cat and mask and girls and sister like me, a neurosurgeon applied onto the operating table and let his colleague release the pinched nerve from his back that had been troubling him all morning. I knew immediately that it was a message from God, and that it was in this very manner that I would get the warrant to be cut out of me and destroyed myself. When Ma asked me later that evening, on the day of God, I told her that it had been nothing short of marvelous, and that I was 120% sure that a medical doctor was what I wanted to be. She smiled when she went to say that. It was a good profession, she said, and she had no doubt I'd be a great physician who would one day help a lot of people. I hadn't thought about the people until she mentioned it. At that moment, I decided it was unwise to tell her that I only wanted to become a doctor so I could make a friend of medical school. He'd be willing to do the hysterectomy that all the doctors we'd seen so far and refused to perform. But that was all a very long time ago. And by the time the title was mine, these childish musings were all but Thank you. Wow, and she's got a beautiful reading voice. <laughs> Let's give her another round of applause. I think Mr. Chubb is a character we can all relate to. But... And that's what's so incredible about this book is there's something in it for absolutely everyone. I'm sure a lot of us remember way back when, for some of us, you know, having to carry things in our bags and it was something that every woman experiences, but it, it becomes
sometimes your own personal crisis. So thank you for saying the things that some girls won't say and allow us to laugh at ourselves. And I think we're all very badass, like you said in the book. Badass with the best of them. So we're going to open the floor now, ladies, for any of you that would like to comment, ask any questions. It's an incredible opportunity. It's not often that you get to actually sit in the same room as the book and the person who wrote it, let alone have them read to you. Are you able to make fun stories? Because I think a lot of us will cry about those. For those of you that um, are wanting to purchase the book, and I have to show you something very cool. They're available here at the exclusive book stand. Um, Harriet Payne as well as Capano's other two books. For those of you that are thinking, well maybe I'll just get one, look at how cool they are. All three of them make a picture at the bottom, so you need to buy the collection. They're 205 Rand each. It's an incredible investment, I think, and not a huge one. And I read an interview recently with Capano speaking about the books that shaped her life, and I think these are the books that are going to shape the future of South Africa. So you want to have your hands on them. And will you sign? Will you? So Capano will sign if you buy the books. And you want to definitely get your hands on a copy of this. But we're going to open the floor now, as I mentioned. For any of you that would like to comment, that would like to ask any questions, maybe just compliment her further, if it's even possible. Um, anyway. Yes, we've got a question over there. Okay, I'm going to bring the mic to you. Hi, my name is Nell. And I want to thank you for this latest offering. I'm just curious, how does, what does it look like when the kernel starts in your brain or in your heart and you know, what's the process like? Not from kernel to finished book, but just, you know, what does it look like when something is working inside of you and um, you can't seem to get it out of you and you want to get it on the page? What's that process like? Thanks for the question. Um, I must say, I, I'm quite self-indulgent with my writing. I write for myself to make sense of the things around me. I journal a lot. And I try very hard not to think of where this is going. Um, so like this book is an accumulation of scraps of ideas, thoughts, uh, pain, joy, over me, the long time. There's lots that don't actually make it possible to miss something. Um, so because I think writing can be it's a very personal tag, it's a very scratching. Um, I just try not to worry so much about the end, just enjoy the journey. Um, and sometimes it comes, something comes of it, sometimes nothing, and that's okay. Um, yeah, so I don't have that the best advice as to the writing process because I am, I just, I really do enjoy it. I just do it for myself. Um, when something comes out of it, that's great, but even if it doesn't, I think it's just a very unique life for me to. Therapeutic storytelling, right? Anybody else? Did you ask because I was looking at you? <laughs> no pressure. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning, Kobani. Um, what an interesting title. I just want to understand where that came from. Uh, it's also quite great to say the least. Um, where did it come from? I mean, I think it's both literal and a metaphor. I mean, I, I think it's quite a uniquely female thing to go through and it's, um, it's both necessary but it also can have lots of sort of, can be associated with lots of humiliation or despair. And I think even as a country, we're going through such a difficult time um, we birthed this democracy and we continue to have these sort of period of pain and lack of a better word. So I don't know, I, just, I don't know where it came from. I mean I just felt that this was what this was going to be called and it just made sense in the story. Um, yeah. <laughs> cool. Anybody else? I think we could. Yeah. Cool. I actually just want to say thank you for the opportunity for us to be here with you this morning. And congratulations once again for the Woman of the Year Glamour Magazine. 
and keep on inspiring us and be on to the So much, thank you, I really appreciate that. I'm going to echo that, you really are an inspiration. So they do say you can have it all, just not at the exact same time. I think you defied that quote. So another round of applause, ladies, if there's no more questions. share with you, share your experiences, and get to know Masa and I definitely want to know how it all ends. So we're going to read the book. It's a light read. It's not too long, so there's no excuse for anyone. Um, and I do think it's a book that is going to shape what comes next. And we can't wait to see what comes next after you've heard your baby. <laughs> okay, so maybe while we wait, Kapana, I read about those five books that you said shaped your life. Do you want to maybe share one of those titles with us? Yeah, sure. I mean, one is a children's book, um, All the Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. Um, my absolute favorite book. It still inspires me to this day, gives me courage. Um, so yeah, that's one. And, but I mean, there's also books for different seasons in life. And so, um, yeah, some books you come to later and you read them at a time where they don't make any sense and later they make perfect sense. So. I, I enjoy exploring. I'm not sort of committed to any genre or any author. Isn't this a beautiful way to start a Saturday? Yeah. Inspired. Are you going to go out and make magic this weekend? Yeah. Hashtag black girl magic. Yeah. For the white girls too. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag girl magic, right? Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, of course to Glamour Magazine, Jakarta Media, Rosebank Mall and Europa been a wonderful, wonderful morning. You don't need to leave right now. Please sit back, relax. You can chat to Capano. She'll also sign your books once you've purchased them. And uh, go out there and make magic, girls. Thank you so much. My name's Taryn, and it's been my absolute pleasure to host you this morning.